we are differentiating using multiple strategies and uh, multiple rules, and they're just focusing on the strategy we would use. So this luckily is a little bit easier. We're not having the the rigor of actually multiplying or dividing or you know, product rule, quotient rule kind of stuff. All right, so when we look at this, what would we do first? So uh, let's look at the question first. Which sequence of rules can be used in order in order to differentiate H in its current form. All right, so how would I do this uh, in its current form? So that means we're not manipulating it. We're not changing it to the product rule. Uh, it almost kind of jumps out at me as moving this uh, to the top and doing product rule, so I don't have to worry about quotient rule, but this is an X divided by X function. So uh, it looks like the first thing I would do would be the quotient rule. Now, when you do the quotient rule, you have this function on top and this function on bottom, and you apply the quotient rule, and then part of the quotient rule has the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top, all divided by the bottom squared, if I remember right. Uh, but the point is that we do a derivative of the top. The derivative of the top has a cosine squared in it. That means there's a chain rule that gets applied when we do the derivative of the top. And that would be a secondary function, uh, secondary operation. So first would be quotient rule, then the chain rule. Quotient rule, then chain rule. There it is right there. Okay, take a look at the next one. So we're just analyzing this. Same idea, sequence in its current form. So uh, what's going on here? What are the X's doing to each other? They are multiplying to each other. The X functions are multiplying to each other. So that would be a product rule first. Then when you're doing the derivative of the second function for the product rule, then the chain rule comes into play again. So this would be product, then chain. Product rule, chain rule. <clears throat> Next one, which sequence can be used to differentiate in its current form? All right, current form. Well, this one's a little, little more tricky. Hmm. In its current form, we have three X functions. We have one, two, three. So uh, notice these are all multiply and the, it looks like it just, that's a negative or a, rational exponent. So that would just be a fractional exponent. So it looks like all I see is product rule uh, and maybe product rule again. Yes. So that that's what it would be is how would I do this is I would probably separate these two functions and do a product rule on, let me change colors. I do a product rule on these two. So let me just write it out. So I'd pull that two out front so it's not an issue. And I'd treat it as x, uh, x to the one half. And that, that's not in its current form, that's just rewriting it. So I'd treat those two as a single function and then I'd have the sine x function. Okay, that, that looks good. So then I'd do the, apply the product rule here and then when it comes to the product rule, the derivative of the first function means it would be another layer of product rule to get through this. So it'd be product rule, product rule. Yep, product rule, there it is again and again. So that one, a little bit tricky. Usually we don't see three X functions on each other. So we'd have to group them and then uh, secondarily do the product rule again on the grouped products. Last one, uh, all right, layered again. Let's see. So layered again, uh, <clears throat> it looks like, so this is negative three. So uh, it says in its current form, but it's nice just to look at it in a separated way so we can see how the functions are kind of interacting with each other so that we can see the strategy. I'm not changing it other than just looking at it in its order. So I would make sure that negative three doesn't play a part. Uh, and then 
for me, having that three on tangent right there, I like seeing it on the outside of the functions. It makes it a little easier for me. So that would be the sine x inside. And then all of that is cubed, right? So that's what tan three right there means is that tangent function gets cubed. You wouldn't put it on the sine because sine's not getting cubed. All right, so this is a lot easier to look at because we think about it as like peeling the onion here in this sense. So how would we get through this one? Well, we would do the original, let's see, do I have, let's do red. We would do the outside function first. So that would be a power rule, power rule on the outside, or you might even call it a chain rule. Um, it's probably a chain rule idea. Uh, so that three would go out in front and then we would do the derivative of the inside function. So there's the layer right there. So it has something to do with its, uh, not sure about what it would be called. It'd be a chain rule or a product rule first. Let's see, not product, power, sorry, no, not product. There's no products going on here. It's either chain rule or power rule. Chain rule, chain rule. All right, so definitely not product rule. There's no multiplying of functions going. It's a function on a function. So chain rule and then chain rule again. Yes, so that looks like the best bet right there. Um, actually, uh, this one, let's be a little bit more careful. Uh, it could be either one of these two and I want to get it perfect. So let's go ahead and let's just be careful on which one it is. So let's actually kind of do something similar to it. So it would, uh, breaking it down, I'd get negative three and the derivative of the tangent function, I'll go ahead and put that there now. Basically that tangent, uh, the three would go out in front and you'd repeat this times the derivative of the inside, the so I'll just go ahead and do that, d dx of sine x. Oh, okay. Um, I thought it might be a product rule right there, but we're not having a function on a function again. It looks like chain rule, chain rule, if I had to had to choose between these two because that one you're not multiplying you're not doing a product on the derivative so let's see chain rule chain rule basically there your multiple layers of the chain rule it would be the derivative of that one going out front and then uh derivative of oh yeah that's yeah okay i see it now sorry just kind of let me go ahead and just rewrite it again so we can see it better this one is a little bit tricky it looks like chain rule, chain rule. So negative three is out in front. Uh, the th starting to do the derivative of this function right here. So the three tangent of sine x. And all of that would get squared and it's good and it's easier to put the exponent there now times the derivative of the inside function times the derivative d dx of the tangent of sine x there we go now we see it so what what's happening here is we got the chain rule first so we did our chain rule uh sorry yeah we did the chain rule so the three moved out in front it's Sometimes you might want to call it the power rule, but because there's a layer of an inside function here, it is not a power rule. So the three goes out in front. There's that three. Exponent goes down by one times the derivative of the inside function. That's what I have here. So that means this one right here, there's another layering of functions. So that would be another chain rule. Good. Got it. So it is A. And for this one, it really helped to rewrite it and kind of see it. So that would be my advice as you're doing these, actually try doing layers of the derivative so you can see how they pan out. Um, and yeah, that's how we do it.